Hey everyone, it's Stamp Ventures with Shauna. Welcome to my live video. It's live if you're watching it at, well, I think it's almost 10 after 2 now on Sunday afternoon. Uh, if you're catching it later than that, it will be the recorded version. And today I'm going to share some really neat tips about uh, watercoloring. I was using the Blended Seasons stamp set here and the newest set of watercolor pencils and my friend in Victoria, Sue Phillips, showed a really great tip for using these pencils. So I'm going to share that with you shortly. Hi Melanie and hello Brenda. Um, and just to let you know, um, it'll take a few minutes to share these ideas. So if you want to you know, grab a coffee or a cool drink or something, uh, so you can be comfortable while I'm sharing this, that would be awesome. Uh, just to begin with, I have a draw to make because I have one, two, three, four, five people. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, who left comments from my video on Tuesday. And I will be sending one of them my version of the mystery card. And I just realized, oh man, I don't know where the, if I, I don't know if I can remember where I set the original version of it. It was from a stamp set for, from quite a number of years ago and it used the top note die. Um, and I adapted it using the new dies that coordinate with the blended seasons and um yeah and also did some watercoloring so uh yeah uh, well you know what i'll show you this right now this is how the how it works uh there's um the ribbon that's glued to the back panel there and this is all one piece so um it's not like a regular open and close card it is well hello to kathy and and ruth as well um when you undo the bow it opens up in this little panel right here. Oh, if I can get it to work, there we go, like that. So in just a few minutes, I'll show you that. But first of all, I'll make the draw from people who left uh, the comments on my last video. So I've got Kathy B and Sue S and Brenda B and Karen S and Melanie C. So I saw all of those uh, comments. Thanks so much for leaving a, a comment and um, just give this a good shake. And whoever is the winner, they're going to receive this card in the mail from me. And I uh, will hold the box away from me so that I can't see. Oh, and I'll hold it so that that I'm not even looking. I'm looking away. I can't. I don't know which ticket I'm going to be picking. It is. Oh, there we go. Melanie. Yay, Melanie. All right. Well, I'll be sending you one of these cards in the mail, Melanie. And I'm just going to give quick instructions on how I've done this because um, I didn't use a blender pen or an aqua painter to do the watercoloring on this. I actually used um, the Wink of Stella Shimmer Pen. And again, I, I mentioned before, I learned that from my friend Sue Phillips, and it is just a really um, awesome technique. So, and uh, just before I carry on any further, I will remind you that until the end of August, the Color Your Season or Blended Season Bundle is available. And um, these uh, watercolor pencils are available right now um, until the end of August as well. I don't know, Stampin' Up! said they may can, um, come back in another catalog, this particular assortment of colors. And um, if you're wondering what's in it, it's like cherry, flamingo, Cajun, crushed curry, apple green, garden green, coastal cabana, balmy blue, night of navy, and gorgeous grapes. So some of our new colors. So uh, yeah, keep that in mind. And um, if you're shopping online, I have a hostess code for August. And uh, if you're placing an order online, I'd send you a small gift and a card in the mail as a thank you for your order. The other thing I, a uh, couple things I thought I'd mention as well. Um, I have two spots left in my Stampin' Rewards Club. That's a group of ladies who meet monthly and um, 
place monthly orders and each month one of them gets a chance to receive the hostess benefits and in return I uh, offer some projects for them to work on uh, new projects each time they learn maybe new techniques or new folds or uh, one or two of them sometimes choose to do the scrapbook pages so uh, keep that in mind if you'd like to join the Stampin Rewards Club that starts up the first week in September the first Wednesday evening or the first Thursday morning or afternoon um, of September and continues on until April or May depending on how many that uh, are joining us and also, uh, our Stampo Bingo Night is now half full. So there are about 10 spots left. And if you're in, uh, interested in joining us, make sure uh, you uh, let us know right away. And um, if you pay by uh, the end of the day on Tuesday, you'll get the early bird price for this Stampo Bingo Night. So that's going to be a lot of fun. And half the prizes for that are going to be from the holiday catalog. Um, I'm not allowed to show you the inside of the holiday catalog, but uh, I can show you the cover and um, there'll be lots of lots of good fun on the bingo night and that's uh, Oh, what is that? I think it's Thursday August 30th. Okay, so um, What I was going to share with you here was first of all how I was able to cut this piece for the front of the card now, I would not do this with this particular cut with um, our colored cardstock because it's heavier, but our Whisper White cardstock, um, the regular, not the extra thick, works uh, really well and uh, because it's a little bit thinner. And so I just had like um, a piece of, what is that, eight and a half by five and a half cardstock that I scored and folded and then I ran it through the big shot oh it's falling apart already I was hoping it would hold in place so I could show you yeah I've, I've run it through the big shot but I left this edge off so that it wasn't going to cut and that maintained the fold there so uh, and I ran it through twice just to make sure it was getting really good pressure um, to go through those two layers of the white cardstock and then when you take that off you get the little oh now this is the other thing that I found was um, the stitching lines actually make it kind of want to stitch <laughs> I've stitched my card together now I got to find a way to open this for you oh okay so here's something that I was going to show you this is cool we have a new tool coming out in the holiday catalog it looks like this it's called take your pick and this end has a little bit of tacky putty um, to help you pick up really tiny sequins and uh, other small items. It's going to be so handy. This end has a spatula, and in a little bit I'll show you how I used that spatula. If you unlock this end, there's a lock and unlock. It's just a, a turn this way and it unlocks. You get a paper piercing tool, and so I'm going to see if the paper piercer is going to help me to oh I better lock that back in I don't want to have the piercer fall out and jab me in the finger there lock okay oh and there's one more end too I might as well show you now before I forget the other end is a double-ended stylus a wider and a narrower so um, that's gonna be uh, yeah th this is just the greatest tool and um, 1350 so a really great price point oh and I should mention you get uh, a refill for the putty end as well. Um, here's my original packaging. See, you get two of these. So, and when you find that the putty is not sticky, you, it's, it's kind of like, um, you know, uh, the blue sticky stuff that you can post up on the wall. What's that called? Sticky tack? Yeah, and if it gets dried out and doesn't, you know, pick up your little things anymore because it loses its stickiness, then you just, um, you pull this, putty off and expose fresh new putty and then when all the putty is used up in there then you put a new end on with fresh putty okay so let's see if I can do I should I should be having my niece to do this she's a doctor um, she's in her uh, in her uh, started her year of residency here in Mushta. oh that's not good okay this opened up much more much more easily for me when I did this before. 
Okay, let's see if I can get these two layers apart. There we go. Oh, well, once it got started, that was easy. But that, there we go, ta-da. The pick, take your pick tool to the rescue. So, okay, there we go. That's how I made this open and shut part. And again, just remember to use white cardstock and not any of the thicker, heavier. So, um, and now the suggestions for the watercoloring unfortunately you're not going to be able to see that from your angle um, and but what I did for doing the watercoloring was using my wink of Stella shimmer brush and um, I'm just going to grab a black ink Let's see if I can find one here there we go it's going to be easier for you to see if I just use black ink for um, this card here I use silver embossing powder and for this one here I used white embossing powder and but just for keeping this short and simple I'm gonna stamp the flowers in black so here we go inking up the flowers from the blended seasons this is this is memento ink stays on would work too um, but I just had memento on hand and what I liked about this is once you had cut this side straight here um, the flowers just kind of sat right right down along the the straight line there and they fit really lovely, really, really well into this lovely framelit. And um, this is the largest framelit that's in the package with the blended season. So yeah, the flowers just fit very nicely into that shape. And I'll just give this a couple seconds to get good and dry. Um, so for this particular um, color combination, I used two colors for the flowers. I used balmy blue and gorgeous grape. I think I've got those. Yeah, that's gorgeous grape there. And this is balmy blue. It's the light blue that coordinates with this cardstock here. And the um, embossing folder that I used at the back is quite lovely. It's one of my new favorites. It's called the tufted embossing folder. Um, yeah, it's it's, it makes really elegant and pretty cards. So what I did for the coloring is I, I went in and I did a light, but very quickly, a, a light background of balmy blue. Um, I didn't spend too much time on it. And um, yeah, I didn't get it you know perfectly into the corners or anything. Your tool that you're blending with that you're painting and watercoloring with is going to get it more into the air, those um, smaller areas. But just just a quick overall um, background of blue. And then I took the gorgeous grape and I went in towards the bottom and just did some coloring that way in in closer to the center of the flower where the color would naturally be deeper and I might even like you know do a little bit of color along the edge where there would be um, a natural shadow um, I won't won't color all three of the flowers but that's that's basically what I did and then um, Wink of Stella it's a shimmer pen and unfortunately the shimmer's not going to show all that well oh my goodness I wonder if we're getting a storm <laughs> have you noticed that as I've been doing this video, it's getting darker and darker and darker, and I think it's windier too. So I'm gonna turn on the light uh, overhead because, um, yeah, I, I don't know, maybe we'll be having a storm here. <laughs> okay, hopefully that's a little better. At least I can see, I don't know if it's if you can see better or not, but, um, so, okay, uh, Wink of Stella, there's, uh, when you pull it apart, um, there's, the brush tip and when it's brand new you have to unscrew it and take out a little black ring in there and then you screw it back up and you give it a shake and you can hear the little shaker balls in there mixing up the shimmery paint and then it says push and that means 
it, well, is what it means is squeeze, and the um, shimmery paint squeezes down and eventually squeezes into the brush. It sometimes takes a few minutes. So I'm gonna hold this up higher just so you can see. What I did is I just worked in small little circles and, and well, in small strokes too, and blended the color out like that. So instead of using a blender pen or an aqua painter, um, I'm doing water coloring with the shimmer pen um, and it gives it a really nice shimmery look. Just a very subtle but beautiful shimmery look. And it actually does dissolve some of the um, the watercolor pencil, I didn't know that, I didn't think this would be wet enough to do that, but it is. It's wet enough to dissolve it, and, and it blends the two colors well, um, really well. And the other thing is that if you're using our regular Whisper White cardstock, aqua painters are usually too wet for this. Uh, the aqua painters would um, start to um, break down the fibers in the paper and you start getting little balls and you might even like paint a hole right through your paper. So um, the fact that we could do water coloring um, with the Wink of Stella on the Whisper White cardstock is a real bonus. You can um, use blender pens too and as long as you're not going over and over the same part again and again, blender pens don't um, cause the paper to break down right away because they're not quite as wet as aqua painters. But um, that's um, basically how I did the watercoloring for these flowers here. And then I should just mention that um, when I did the leaves, I used two more colors. And so what I would have done is I would have uh, colored until all the blues and purples were off of my Wink of Stella pen. And then for the greens, I did basically the same process. I used, hmm, I know I used Granny Green Apple and I'm just wondering if I left it over at the other part of my table. It was, anyways, it was a layer of Granny Green Apple and then I went back and did some uh, the corners of the leaves and down the stem of the leaves with the garden green and so that's how I got the lighter and the darker looks to the leaves. Um, it was kind of nice how it blended all together. So and then I used the granny green apple as the base of my card. For this card here I used petal pink as my base and this one is just a regular open and shut card it's um, not not like this one that has the die that um, is cut along the fold and um, and I use white the white embossing powder and then I use the flirty flamingo which is just like a deeper shade of the petal pink because the petal pink is a little bit salmon colored and so the flirty flamingo well it looks very purpley here but the flurry flamingo is well you know it's like it's a flamingo color so it's kind of got a a salmony it's a warm pink and so i would have done the same thing i would have just colored a little bit in those areas uh at the base of the petals and then again used the wink of stella and i wish oh, i was just hoping that maybe i'd be able to catch a little bit of that glimmer um with the light on now, but it's not really showing, but it's it's very pretty. And so this one, you even have to do less coloring because the cardstock itself is already colored. So you just have to do a little bit of, um, yeah, add a little bit of shading just there in the base and then blend it out and you get that nice soft and dark tones. And if you're wondering how I got, again, this is Granny Green Apple. If you're wondering how I got the, um, the frame around there. Uh, the blended seasoned seasons framelits work really well. Um, you just cut the two framelits and run them through the die um, or through the big shot at the same time and then you'll get um, a frame and the neat thing is that with this frame you're going to have the stitching on the outside as well as the stitching on the inside. Um, that's the neat thing about these framelits is they've got stitching outer and inner edge and then the cut, the cutting edge there in the middle. So 
running them through together makes a really neat frame that way. Oh, and you can see I used the tufted embossing folder again there and some of our polka dot ribbon. Um, so that was that was a fun card to do. And I'm just gonna show you um, some tips. If you've got a Stamparatus, um, I found the Stamparatus really, really helpful for doing this Christmas card. This was one of the cards from my Christmas in July. Oh, I better put the end on to my spatula. Okay, turn this around. Spatulas at the other end. If you just joined me, this is the new Take Your Pick tool. It'll be coming out in the holiday catalog. Um, so here is my Stamparatus. And I think this is the middle sized of the dies that I used here, the sort of the label shape. And I created a template just with a regular piece of paper and um, I know now when I cut this piece out and I set it in the middle of this template always stays I don't change it I always use the same one and it's always up into this corner here I know now when I set this right into here because I've done um, you know got some scrap papers and done all the lineup all I need to do is ink up the Merry Christmas and I know that's going to hit right in the middle where I would like it to that might have already had cherry on it and I just put black on it now so we make it an interesting color oh no it looks pretty black to me and then this is really cool so there are these bows and I wanted when the people came to the class I wanted them to be really successful and hit hit it you know not too far off but not too far down that it would get in the way of the um the words so again I got it all lined up with my particular frame that I created for it and like I said this has always stayed in here for the whole class and people just came and put their cutout label piece in there and well we would have uh, used um, Versamark because there's gold embossing on the the Christmas leaves there but just again to show you for the video I'm just going to use black so you can see how this works um, we ink that up and oh and if you can't get your plate to um, go down as easily as you think it should make sure when you're at the top that it's stuck firmly and straight into the into the hinges there so um, because I'm close to the hinges I'm gonna give a little extra push there so hopefully yay yeah there we go got the leaves all lined up at that end so then I'm gonna take and flip my label my piece that I've cut out I'm gonna make sure it's back everything's doing you know up and matched up into the corner again always do that to left uh, that corner matchup I always work with my Stamparatus, I guess it's sideways, because look at, see there's the logo for stamping up, and I've got it, yeah, it's, uh, but I kind of, I like to do like left to right, like a book, and top to bottom, but you can, you can move your Stamparatus around in whichever way that you find um, is comfortable for you and, and makes sense, so that's the neat thing about it. Oh, okay, I got black there, but hopefully that won't transfer because, oh, okay, make sure it's in. There we go. Um, I'm not going to be pushing there anyways, pushing up close to the... All right, so there we go. That's how I got the top and the bottom of my Christmas card to um, match up so nicely and fit right into uh, the die that had been already cut out. I love this using a template and um, the Stamparatus and getting things right in place where you want them. It's going to be great for doing all those Christmas cards this year. One last thing, I promised I would show you how the Take Your Pick tool works. And so I just pull these out and move them out of the way. And bring back in the take your pick tool that looks like this so I don't know if you noticed in this card and the other flower card that for the center of the flowers I used the teeny teeny tiny little pearls yeah it's like the smallest ones that we have 
like they are so so small and I almost uh, like I kind of avoid them like the plague because you know you pick it up with your fingernail and then it's like either stuck under your fingernail or you you can't get it off and you, you can't get it where you want it to go on the page so um, this take your pick tool is really gonna help for things you look at stuck to my finger now and I, I yeah okay let go there we go okay that's it's there now on my paper I don't know if you can see it but um, so the way the spatula works is that you take and I should lift this up so maybe you'll be able to see you slide it on the edge of your pearl or rhinestone or whatever. Now what I'm finding is that I'm actually just moving it. So I'm gonna need to take an, well you could use your finger, but again, I don't have very good success with my fingers and these teeny tiny little um, pearls. So now I've just got uh, the other part of the tool and I'm holding the pearl so that now, yay, look at that, I've picked it up I don't know if you can see that all that well. It's maybe looking blurry to you. I've picked that up with the tip of my spatula and um, I'm looking at my card to see, like I've pretty much loaded it with pearls, but you know what? I could probably put one more pearl right down here. So then I set my spatula down and again, I could use my finger just to um, move it off, but I find they just wanna stick to my fingers, these little guys. So then I'm just gonna take this, uh, other tool and there it is it's in its spot and um, now I've got another I've got six pearls there instead of five and it makes the transfer so nice and easy um, and okay so there's a pearl that's stuck to the paper if it's stuck really hard I um, I'd have to pick it up with a spatula but if it's not stuck too terribly um, firmly I might be able to pick it up with the putty end. we'll see if I can do that there is adhesive on the back oh look at that there we go yeah so I picked it up with the putty end and then okay oh I'm gonna put another we'll just put lots of pearls and I'm just gonna touch it and then I would probably take my finger and give it an extra push just to make sure that it's secure and the adhesive from the back of the pearl is firmly attached so this is great. Watch for it when uh, the um, the uh, Christmas catalog comes out. Uh, we'll probably I'll bring mine when we have our stampo night and people can try it out. If we have um, you know rhinestones or gems that we're using, I'll have that on the table so people can give it a go and see how it works for them. And yeah, just a crazy good tool at a really nice price point. So. I hope you learned some ideas today. Um, if you th think you know somebody who would um, like to see a new watercoloring technique or um, how to cut a die like this, uh, please share my video and um, let them know there, there might be some new techniques that they would like to know about. And um, I'll be back on Tuesday with, I think it'll be my Christmas card for the month of August. I've been a little behind in my Christmas cards, but I've been trying to do 10 on each month so that maybe by December I'd have like a hundred or 110 or you know uh, theoretically 120 if I did 10 each month and all ready to go so we'll see how I do with that and yes I'm glad it's on your on your list Melanie because it's just a fantastic tool and um, uh, yeah they really solved a problem when they um, created this for us so Thanks again. Hope everyone has a good day. Hope you're staying cool and not too stormy. We'll talk to you again soon. Bye for now.